number one, we need to find the form of a partial fraction. And the problem says do not evaluate, but I'm just going to show you some steps on how you would evaluate it also. So we have our function there, and remember to form partial fractions, you want to split up the fraction into uh, multiple fractions with denominators that are the factors of the original denominator. So we start with x squared plus x plus 3, and our denominator is already factored for us. Now that's not always going to be the case, so sometimes you're going to have to factor it yourself. Um, but we get x, x squared plus 1 squared, and x minus 2 squared. <clears throat> so we have a few, three different factors in the bottom, but remember when, and when a given factor has a power that's higher than 1, there's some special things you need to do there too. So first we just have x, so we're going to have one fraction, a over x. Remember that your numerator always has to be one degree lower than your denominator, so this one would just be a constant, a. So the next one we have is we have x squared plus 1 squared. And remember that if you have a factor that the entire factor is raised to a power, you only look at the interior part to figure out what um, degree you should put on the numerator. And in this case, this is degree 2. So we would have bx plus c on our numerator. And we also have to put a fraction that has that same factor, but it's single power. And that one also has to have a numerator of degree 1. So we would have dx plus e. And finally, we have x minus 2 quantity squared. So remember, even though that's squared, you look at the interior to figure out what, co uh, what type of numerator you need. That's only degree 1, so we just have a constant, which would be f. And we have x minus 2. We have the singular power as well, and that one, again, just has a constant. So we have g. So we have many uh, constants in this case. So this is one where not, you would not be expected to fully solve, like uh, the question says, do not evaluate. But remember that in order to do so, you would need to get each term and multiply it by all the missing factors. And remember that the couple of methods for then solving for them is either plugging in numbers that make them zero. For example, you could use x equals zero and it would knock out many of the factors. You could use x equals 2, and it would knock out many of the factors. And you'd be left with a system of equations. The other way that you can do it is you can match powers of x. So if you uh, multiply everything through here by the factors you need, you know that you need everything in front of the x squared to come out to 1, everything in front of the x to come out to 1, and all of the constants to come out to 3. And if you ended up with any powers of x greater than 2, which you would have in this case, those all have to be zero, so you can set up many systems of equations that way as well.